Welcome to MacroCode. If you're new to this channel, consider subscribing. So today I'm going to take you through something called a dev tunnels. So I'm sure some of you guys might be wondering, for example, assuming you have such an API like students management web API, and you are co-developing this with someone else and you want them to test. You don't have a server that you can host this application or even assuming you are developing a mobile app and you want to test uh, some some endpoints on your API or uh, upload data, login functionalities, and some of the options that you may want to achieve, but you don't have somewhere to host your API. So as you can see, I've launched my API, and this API is running on localhost, and you can see this the port. So assuming I want to share with someone this link, and they are in a different zone somewhere and they need to access this API of mine and test the API. So currently this is not possible because this API is currently running on my local host on this machine. So assuming I want to have this accessible publicly and can be accessed by, the, by someone or system testers or even a colleague we are working with, then I should be able now to use what we call dev tunnels. So dev tunnels will allow me to expose this API publicly and can be accessed by my colleague or even someone uh, doing uh, testing. And even assuming I'm developing a mobile app and I want to kind of test the API without uh, uh, accessing, maybe hosting the, the API somewhere on a server for me to uh, utilize the end, some of the endpoints here. So, let us begin and see because we've just launched the API and you can see this is how it looks. So this is actually an API that we created in our previous video. If you want to see how this was done, check on the link below and you'll be able to see that. So I'm going to take you through how to create a dev tunnels and how that dev tunnels will be able to give us a different link and not the local host link. So if you go to HTTPS here, and go back down here, you'll see we have something called dev tunnels. And you can see we don't have any active uh, de dev tunnel at the moment. So what we need to do is to create a dev tunnel. So I want us to create a dev tunnel. So click uh, create a tunnel. So as you can see, once you click create, it will give you the account. So the account that will be used to create the dev tunnel. So you should provide the account to be used. So then you, sh you should also provide the name uh, that will be used when, when selecting the dev tunnel in your Visual Studio. So I'm going to give it a name. You can say API dev tunnel. So this is, I can even say this is student, student API dev tunnel. Then you can see that the, you can also select the tunnel type. So we have the temporary and persistent. So this determines the lifetime of the URL. So a persistent tunnel will typically reuse the same URL. A temporary tunnel will, reuse, will use a new URL each time your Visual Studio is started. So this means for the two tunnel types, temporary and persistent, you can actually uh, choose depending on how you want. For the temporary one, each time you restart your Visual Studio and launch the application, then the link will be different. But for the persistent one, each time you restart your application, uh, that is your Visual Studio, and launch the application, then the link will be the same. So for mine, I want to have it temporary. Then we have the access type. So we have three uh, access types. So we have the private, organizational, and public. So as you can see, we have some good description here. So access type, this determines who can access the tunnel. So when set to private, the tunnel is only accessible to the account which is created, and this is the account. So for the organizational, this will only be accessible to the organization's uh, account, which to the organizations in which the account that you've used here is actually a member of. Then you have the public. So public doesn't require any authentication, and it's actually not recommended. So that means if you set this public, it will actually it will actually be used by anyone without being uh, authenticated and used by this. It doesn't require them to provide an account. Uh, for the private, they will need to uh, the only account that will need to access that uh, dev tunnel will be the account that you've used to create that dev tunnel. For the organization, 
all the guys within the organization and the organization which the account is a member of can be able to access that. So although the public dev tunnel is not recommended, I'm going to choose it uh, to have it as a public because if I set it public, then you guys can even access the link. But by the time you see this video, I should have deleted the link. So don't try and access it. You will not be able to reach it. So I'm going to use a uh, public. Then if I click OK, then my dev tunnel will be created. As you can see, this is uh, uh, created. So if I click OK, so I have my dev tunnel. So let's go back to the HTTPS uh, section here. Then if you see at, under dev tunnels, you'll see under bracket, you have now student API dev tunnel. So before we launch anything, if I just click back to none and I relaunch my application, I want you guys to see something. So if I just click that, then you can see our application is launching on localhost uh, 7237, which is our, our uh, uh, link. And this is actually running on this machine. But in case I want to have this access accessed by someone else, I can come back to HTTPS, then I'll choose dev tunnels, then you'll be able to see we have now the dev tunnel that we've created. So if I check on that and come back here, I'll see that that is already ticked and you can see it is actually checked. So if I launch my application, so the, it will actually give me a dialogue to continue and confirm. So let's just wait and see. So you can see, so this is the dialogue. So you can see you are about to connect to a developer tunnel at this, then this is the link of the, of the tunnel. So you can uh, read some of the information here, only continue to visit the website if you trust whoever sent you the link. Do not disclose personal information. Uh, this warning will only be shown once per tunnel. This tunnel was created 14 seconds ago in E, so that is it. So if I click continue, then I'll be able to access my API. So as you can see, I want you to be keen with the link. So as you can see on top here, my link is not now the, is not now the local host. So my link is quite different. So this link, we can actually reuse it and do something else. So we can, if I just go back here, uh, add a new tab, paste the link, try to access, you can see I'm still able to access the API. So what I want us to do, remember we chose the a tunnel type as temporary. So if I just go back to our, so let me just go back to our, and our on our controller. So I want, I want to have this, so I can paste this link here. So if I paste this link here, I want you to see something. So we said for the, for the temporary dev tunnel, this link will be different based on the Visual Studio. When you restart Visual Studio, then this link will be different. So I'm going to restart my Visual Studio. So I'm going to close it. Then if I close it, then I will need to reopen. So let me just reopen. So for those who are watching this video and you have not subscribed to our channel, please consider subscribing, like our video and comment down below. So I'm going to launch that. Then if I go to our, so that they, there it goes. So I'm back to my Visual Studio. So you can see this is the link that we had previously. But now I'm going to relaunch the uh, application using the same, same dev tunnel. So you can see it is not selected. So I'm going to reselect it. So once I reselect it, you'll be able to see this is checked. So I can now relaunch the application. So if I relaunch the application, then this will be able to start and I should be able to see the new link. So the link that will be given to us is not the same link as we used previously. So this will be a different link. So let's just wait and see. So you can see that is our application launching and each time, each time we relaunch our application, then we are going to receive this uh, dialogue. So I'm going to say continue. And you can see on top here, our link will be different because we've restarted our Visual Studio. So that means, remember we chose the temporary uh, tunnel type. So that means our link here. So if I just come back here and paste, so I'm going to remove this. So I want you to see how that works. 
So you can see our links are two different links. So we have this, uh, then the tunnel MS. So these are two different links and we can actually access this. So if I just copy this link and open another tab, paste the, the link and try to access. So you can see I'm able to access this API. So now I want you to see something. The only way this works is you can only access this API as long as it is running on my Visual Studio. If I stop this section, if I stop my Visual Studio, then go back, open the browser, paste the link, try to access, you'll be able to see that it is trying to find the API, but it's not actually working. So that means for you to access these links, the, the dev tunnel, you must be have you must be having the application running and the Visual Studio already launched. So if I try to relaunch now, then I should be able to access my dev tunnel link. So this, this link now, I can actually share it with someone who is miles away from me. And even I can use it to test either my mobile apps or even I can share the link for someone to test. So you can see I relaunched and I can now, if I paste the link, I can now access my API. So this API can be accessible as long as I share the link. So that is how you can use dev tunnels to actually maybe collaborate with someone uh, while your machine, while you are running the application locally, or even if you want to test your API using uh, either mobile apps or you are kind of pushing data from somewhere and you want to test how it works, then dev tunnels will work for you. So as I said, guys, by the time I am uploading this video, I will have removed my dev tunnel. So let's just do it with you together. So I'm going to my show dev tunnels window. Then I'll show you so that you don't try that. So as you can see, I have my that is the only dev tunnel that I have. Then I'll just right click and I remove, accept the dialogue and I don't have my dev tunnel. So if I just go back here to HTTPS, you'll notice that dev tunnels, I don't have any dev tunnel. So I'll choose none. So if I choose none, you see here, I have none created tunnel. Then I have these options. So if I choose none, then I run the app. Then I'll be able to relaunch the app. So my app is launching. So you can see, there we go. So, and that is it. So if you are watching this video and you have not subscribed, please consider subscribing, like our video and comment down below. See you in our next video. Bye.